Patchock Firearms Restoration. Glad to see you guys are all doing good out there. Today I'm going to show you some of the tips and tricks that I use to get a little bit better in refinishing old gun stocks. I really uh, hope you guys watch through this video, learn a few things before you go off and touch your granddad's old beat up shotgun or rifle, or you attempt to try to refinish one for yourself for the first time. Some of the things I'm going to show you today. Uh, can be done on the cheap and without screwing up what could be a family heirloom or a gun that's been around in the family for a while. So when I first started in this, I started using uh, basic finishes that you would use on a piece of furniture. And a lot of old gun stocks aren't finished in the same way. I started off by using Minwax and regular spray polyurethane and I found that the finishes just weren't durable as some of the oil finishes that you find with firearms. Uh, True oil, very durable finish. Uh, I use it all the time. really enjoy its results. I like the way it makes a good piece of wood look. Uh, so one of the things that I did before I started really getting into some of the guns that I really liked was I started advertising and looking for old pieces of firearm furniture either online or on Craigslist or on eBay and I even advertised because I work for a rather large company on a forum that they have looking for looking to buy old shotgun parts or old rifle parts or pieces just non-functioning stuff just to practice on and what I found was a lot of people have old stocks sitting up in their attic or in the basement and they're more than willing to part with them for a few dollars and sometimes even for free just to get them out of the house get rid of the clutter so some of the things that I picked up were some of these old shotgun stocks and you can see that the original finish on them when I received them was absolutely horrible but after some sanding and some finishing and a little bit of checkering they turned out pretty good and these were great practice pieces here's another one that had I just took it down to the raw and then I tried putting a new finish on one side just to see how it would come out also redid the checkering a little bit and if I was to screw this up it's no loss you could simply put the stripper back on, take the finish off again, and you could try something completely new with it. The other thing I did with all, both of these was I only did half. So then on one side, I could try something like True Oil, and then on the flip side, if I ever wanted to, I could strip this off, and I could put something like linseed oil or Danish oil on it, and see how that finish would come out. Another good thing, to, in addition to just stocks like this, a lot of times what you'll find is just people have old beat up stocks. I got this group. I bought eight old rifle stocks. These are actually like Boy Scout uh, drill rifles. They were non-functioning rifles. They just had a like a metal tube and a fake bolt in it. But you can see how munged up this thing is. I haven't redone this one yet. It's, this one's just sitting off in the corner. And I picked up six of these for 80 bucks so that's fifteen dollars per stock and you could practice stripping it refinishing it staining it and then see if you can get the desired results before you actually touch your old granddad's gun and screw it up another good thing that these old stocks are good for is practicing checkering this was one of the first checkering jobs i did and it didn't come out too good but i learned a lot from the experience and I learned a lot about controlling the tool, what not to do. On this particular one, I put some dark stain in here afterwards, and I realized that 
adding stain into it actually bled into the lighter grain of the wood so it's like okay that's a mistake I don't want to do that again I'm glad I did it on a spare piece so a lot of the places a lot of times you can find these on eBay and you can get them shipped right directly to your house for an old broken stock and it doesn't cost a lot of money so let's let's take a quick look over on eBay and see what we have to, what we can find out there and see what see what some of the stuff costs so here we are looking through eBay for antique shotgun stocks and you can find some for under $50 and you can even find four ends. See how dirty this one looks. This one's not in bad shape. But again, this would be a perfect candidate. Looks like the wood on it. It's got some really nice grain. And it's only got to buy it now price of like $55 plus $13 shipping. This would be a good one to make a lamp out of. It's pretty nice looking. Uh, here's a lot of, looks like, what, eight, four ends. Some of them are in pretty serious need of repair. These would be perfect to check out. Attempt to, ooh, look at that one. Try to steam some dents out try some new finishes looks like we have several different types of finishes this one's got some poly with some checkering this one right here has got some old beat up checkering looks very dry rotted but still we could we could buy this one and we could attempt to de-oil it get the oils out play with the checkering this one's got some beat up checkering on it this one's got some old beat up checkering on it the wood on this one's very nice. Looks like it's got a poly coat on it. This one would be a great candidate for stripping and refinishing. See how that comes out with some true oil. And as we look down through the listings, we find more. Let's see if we can find some really dirt cheap ones. 27. $54. Could always go back and we'll set the price lowest. Price press shipping lowest first. Let's try a different search. Let's try broken shotgun stock. See what that turns up. There's some bolts. So here's one, 12 gauge Sportsman's, J. Stevens broken butt stock, $15 or best offer. This one right here would be a great candidate to practice refinishing on, steaming dents. Probably even uh, trying some acro glass to fix whatever's broken on it. You see, it's got a crack in the back here. So, for $15, it looks like it's held together up forward on the front end with some friction tape, like the last Stevens that I rebuilt. And we can see a big chunk here is missing. So we could, you could even take the front of this one and just cut it off and you could, you could try several different finishes on it, stripping it. This would be a great candidate. What else we got here? J.C. Higgins stock. With a crack in it. This would be a great candidate for 20 bucks plus $12 shipping and handling. Big old crack. You could attempt to crack repair on this one, and if it didn't work, 
you, you could still use the wood for scrap for other projects. Probably a good piece of hardwood. You could also probably, once you refinished it, you could practice checkering on it. Since it doesn't look like it has any currently. This would be a fabulous candidate for just playing around with for under $35 shipped right to the house. So once you get your rifle stock or any other wood back from eBay or from wherever you found it and sourced it from, what you can do after you strip it, you don't necessarily have to refinish the whole entire thing. You can experiment with all the different types of finishes on one simple piece of wood just to see if it's the desired results you're looking for when you refinish your granddad's gun or your favorite gun. So what we could do is we could try we could try several different ones. The first one I'm going to try on this one is true oil. Just take a little and we'll wipe it on. We'll see what see what kind of color this brings forth in the wood what kind of sheen you get keep in mind that all of these require about the same amount level of sanding and finishing but each one of these varies in their drying time between coats and what it takes to get that level of finish that you're looking for I found that the the true oil typically after several coats with some wet sanding in between will give you a much glossier finish than the boiled linseed oil. The boiled linseed oil in my opinion gives you more a satin finish but approximately the same color as the true oil. It's about the same darkening it goes on wetter and it takes a little bit longer to dry but it gives you pretty close to the same results as the true oil color wise another thing that's good to try is Danish oil this comes in various degrees of of colors and darknesses uh, this is a black walnut, so if you're refinishing a lighter piece of wood and you want to bring it darker, this would be a very good option. It's also very thin. You can see there's not too much of a difference between that and the other oils. But after several coats of buildup with the Danish oil, you'll find that it'll give you a slightly darker hue to the wood. Like I said, this is especially useful when you're trying to darken up a very light piece of wood like an old Savage or a Stevens. Lastly, one of the things I've done to help bring out the mismatch in the wood is I've used different degrees of different colors of minwax wood finishes uh, I recently did a, a old marlin and the difference in the wood between the forend and the in the buttstock was dramatically different and in order to get the forend to the same darkness or color that the buttstock was I had to add some some minwax red mahogany to it to get it to pop a little more as you can see this actually really looks very good and because minwax is also oil based you can also use it in conjunction with um, the oil finishes like true oil later to get that that luster that sheen to the wood so you can see there's a slight difference between each one of them kind of went from light down to the darker ones with more coats you'll find that you'll get it a little darker and a little more sheen
This is Pat Jog Firearms Restoration signing off. Hopefully you guys and gals have a great day. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Come back and join the channel if you have a passion for refinishing and rebuilding old firearms. Thank you. Have a great day.